Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. This year we decided to go through the entire book of Revelation, mostly because it's a scary book. People tr tend to avoid it, they don't read it, they think it's confusing, or they think, you know, there's just more than one way to interpret it. I don't want to get it wrong. So we're going through it nice and slow. Little tiny bite-sized chunks and we're seeing that the book of Revelation begins as a letter. Jesus dictates that to John. Uh, it's to several different churches. We have four of the letters that Jesus dictates. Letters to the church in Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, and Thyatira. And when you read these letters, they kind of sound like a performance review or job review. This is, you know, where you're doing good, and this is where I see that you could use some improvement. Uh, what do you think? Do you think you'd like a performance review from God? <laughs> Probably not. But what if you were doing something wrong? What if you were doing something wrong? Wouldn't you want to know? Don't you want to please God? You certainly don't want to waste your time if you're not doing what God wants. In the letter to Ephesus, God says, I like this, I like this, but you've lost your love for me. To the church in Smyrna, he says, I see you. I see you when you suffer, especially when you experience persecution for your faith. To the church in Pergamum, God says, you know what? It's not okay to have false teaching in the church. You can't just do whatever you want. And the warnings are important because the church is facing persecution from Rome right now. It's a dangerous time to be a Christian and God knows that the church has to remain pure, it has to stay focused, it has to stay on target for another 217 years before Constantine finally comes along and makes Christianity the statewide religion. God doesn't want us to guess if we're doing it right. You ever had that prayer? You pray to God and you say, God, am I doing this right? Am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right choice? I don't want to just feel my way through this. I don't want to make assumptions. Right? I want, I want to do what pleases God. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 18, we have our letter to the church in Thyatira. And it begins, To the angel in the church of Thyatira write, The words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and whose feet are like burnished bronze. So every letter has a to and a from. Right? That's how we were all taught to write letters as kids. This is a church letter to Thyatira, and it's from Jesus, right? No question about that. Verse 19, I know your works, your love and faith and service and patient endurance, and that your latter works exceed the first. Those are all great things. Jesus commends them for love and faith and service and endurance. Those are all great pillars. Those are all wonderful foundations for a church. Verse 20, but I have this against you. Yikes, that was quick, right? <laughs> Good news is out of the way, on to the improvements. Uh, Jesus describes himself at the beginning of this letter, though, right? He, he describes his appearance and, and his title. He says, the words of the Son of God. And why would he say that? Well, in Thyatira, uh, the larger community worshipped Apollo. And he was the sun god. Apollo was also the son of Zeus. And Zeus was the father figure god. So you could say that Apollo in Greek mythology was the son of God. So it's significant that Jesus identifies himself as the son of God. He's asserting himself and saying, no, I am the son of the father. And then he says, the words of the son of God who has eyes like flames of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. Why would he say that? Remember, Apollo is the god of the sun. And Jesus almost seems to say, you think uh, the god of your city burns bright? I burn even brighter. I have authority. I am God's son. I am brighter and more powerful than any god than you could possibly create. Verse 20, he says, but I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants 
to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. You know, in 2020, it's not uncommon to hear people talk about how they feel. And we're very touchy-feely lately. We're very concerned about people's feelings. And you know what? That is, that's a healthy place to be. It's healthy to consider how somebody else feels and how they're doing. And like any good thing, it also has the potential to go a little too far. And it goes too far when it encroaches on somebody else's safety or it encroaches on somebody else's feelings. Just because you feel angry or hurt doesn't mean you're allowed to hurt someone else, right? But what about God? Do we apply those same measures to God? Is it more difficult because we don't always know how God is feeling? What happens when God's hurt? God tells us how he feels. So that's what the Bible is. These letters to these churches is God making himself known to us. He's saying, I see these things that you're doing, and you know, sometimes they hurt me. We read the Bible to better understand our relationship with our Creator. That's what Revelation is. It's another way for us to know and to learn more about God. God wants to reveal himself to us. And part of that is him telling us how he feels. So there is no more guesswork and we don't have to rely on our feelings or guessing. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.